Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where mm, I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend, Bradley, and today is a Pleasant Sunday smoke. And on this Pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of Savinelli. Essenza Cipriota. This is the next video. The next video. This is the next blend that we will be reviewing on video, but I recorded my first impressions video today. And this one is a weird one. I don't know what's going on. I did the first impressions video. Ostensibly, this is an English blend. It has Cyprian Latakia, as the name would suggest. It has some Burley in it as well, some Virginias, and then some Macedonian leaf. I don't really taste almost any of that. I don't know what's going on. I'm tasting maybe a bit of a topping, maybe a wine sort of topping. There's something fruity, something sweet happening, but I don't hate it either, and I usually hate anything that has a topping. I'm just very confused. I don't know what's happening. Right now, I did that whole first impressions video and I'm about halfway through the bowl. One thing is that it requires a lot of relights. It has not stayed lit for more than like five minutes the entire time. And right now, typically if there were a topping on a blend like this, enough of it would burn off by this point that I would detect more of the actual tobacco underneath. I'm still not really tasting Latakia, which is odd because by smelling this tin, it seems like there's a lot of Latakia, a lot, a lot, a lot of Latakia in it. I don't know what's going on. This is a very confusing blend for me. So watch the first impressions video. It should be interesting as I, I furrow my brow and look like a doofus, just wondering what the hell is going on. And then in one week's time, well, the first impressions video will post Wednesday. And then a week from there, we'll have the actual review. I may like it. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's very strange. And I'm smoking it though in my 1964 Dunhill. Ugh, such a beautiful pipe. I love this pipe. This pipe is basically the pipe. It's the quintessential pipe. It's the apotheosis of a pipe for me. It is a straight billiard. It's a group four size, which is basically perfect in my opinion, the Dunhill group four. It has, it's a smooth, I, I do like sandblasted a lot as well. I like how they feel in the hand. Um, but I think if I had to pick, like, this is a pipe, my pipe, it would be a smooth shape like this, a smooth billiard. The saddle bit, as much as I actually prefer the silhouette of a tapered stem, I think for practicality and just smokeability, I do like the saddle bit a lot, especially because I put a bit on the end of my pipes and that kind of makes them a little bit thicker on the end. So when you have a tapered stem, it's a little bit more to hold on to. This is, it's light. It's beautiful, it smokes amazingly well, it looks amazing, I love just looking at it. Um, I'm going a little crazy because I'm getting a little bit of rim darkening. I'm, I, I always try to not load my pipes too high, but you know as you light them, the tobacco expands and it comes up over the rim and you're like, ah, get down there, get down there. The only option is to just, you know, only load your pipes halfway every time, but then you get an uneven cake and that's not the best thing to do, so, I'm to that point where, I don't know, if you ever get a new car or some new piece of technology, some new piece of furniture, and you're super, super careful with it all the time, and then you get that first scratch or that first ding, and then you're like, okay, well, I'm using it, so it's going to get used, and it's eventually going to look used. This pipe, as pristine as I would like to keep it, it's for smoking. It's for me to enjoy, and so I'm going to try to accept the fact that there's going to be a little rim darkening. It's not bad, and I do the little cry. I give a little rub down, I have a little polishing cloth, I try to make sure that I keep it as, as good as I can, but it's gonna get used. It's gonna look used eventually, so I'm just gonna have to grow to accept that. Um, for now, it's a beautiful pipe, a beautiful smoker. Thanks again to Check Engine for sending this along. It was a gift that uh, was pretty amazing. I'm gonna crack open my Dr. Pepper here. We have lots of questions from you, the viewers, both through Patreon and through Twitter. We have some other things to discuss. Let me take a sip and uh, get my head together, and we'll be right back. Yeah, Dr. Pepper. It's so weird. Okay, first of all, some news. Things to be looking forward to on both the channels, Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things Plays. Like I said, we have the first impressions video of Savinelli Senza Cipriota coming up. Um, and then on Stuff and Things Plays, I'm sorry, we're gonna get a little bit into video games here, but I know a lot of you enjoy watching the series on that channel. I finished the main story of Red Dead Redemption 2. There's still a lot of game left, there's an epilogue, but I finished the main story, the main arc, and the video, I can't remember which episode it is, 81, 82? 
that will be posting this coming week and my god the narrative in that game is the best video game story i have ever ever experienced it's amazing and the the main character arthur morgan is the best video game character the best best video game protagonist i have ever played as ever experienced it's it's a work of art it's a crazy sprawling giant maybe over long messy beautiful just ridiculously good game there are flaws but it's a work of art it's a piece of art and it's worth checking out if you guys haven't watched the series at this point there are close to 80 episodes so far it's big so if you want some content there's a lot of content for you to get into i really suggest you watch it and if you if you stick around and get to the end get to the payoff it's really worth the ride it's it's amazing I, I i almost teared up a little bit at the end there were several moments that really got to me emotionally i do have emotions a few i experience emotions occasionally so i was experiencing some while playing that game and uh yeah it's it's amazing so what we're gonna do now because we've gotten to the end of the main story i want to play another game and that is sekiro shadows die twice by from software some of you who have watched my stuff and things plays channel will know that i like some of those soulsborne games i haven't played bloodborne yet i was going to play that on the channel but dark souls dark souls 3 are on the channel full player throughs uh, i played a little bit of dark souls 2 but not on the channel um and sekiro is a game by from software in the same vein as those games where it's supposedly very very difficult but it changes up quite a few things in that old uh kind of dark souls formula it's set in Sengoku era Japan, but with some sort of magical, mystical quality overlaid on top of it. It looks gorgeous, it looks really really cool, and it just came out on this Friday, so I want to play that on the channel as well. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go through the epilogue of Red Dead Redemption 2, but starting this week, we are going to start interspersing Sekiro episodes in the middle. So we'll do to Sekiro, to Red Dead every week until Red Dead's over, and then we'll do all Sekiro. And I'm pronouncing it Sekiro because I'm a doofus and that's how it should be pronounced. And I know it sounds annoying and pretentious. It's one of those things where if there's a Japanese word, I took a little Japanese. In college, I know a little Japanese. So I know how things are supposed to be pronounced. If there's a Japanese word that has made it into English and is used a lot, I will pronounce it the American way, like karaoke. It's karaoke is the way it would actually be pronounced, but I say karaoke like we all do in America. Um, even actors like uh, Toshiri Mifune, or to Toshiro Mifune, who was a, a Kurosawa stalwart, was in most of his films. That's how we say it here. It would be like Mifune Toshiro-san, if you were to pronounce it properly in Japanese. So. Everyone is starting to play this game, Sekiro, and everyone is saying it in myriad ways, like they'll, they'll say Sekiro, 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 like people just say it, you know, like Americans would say it. And I know it's annoying and I know it's pretentious, but here's how it's pronounced. Sekiro. And every syllable is basically emphasized the same amount. You're not Sekiro, you're just Sekiro. That's how it's pronounced, and that's how I'm going to say it, and that's going to annoy some people. Um, but it looks like it's awesome, so expect one of those episodes on Monday. Then we'll have, I think, one episode of Red Dead that leads up. It's like the penultimate episode of the main story. Then we'll have another, and that'll be on Wednesday. Then we'll have another Sekiro episode on Friday. And then I think it's next Sunday will be the culmination of the main story in Red Dead Redemption 2. And my god. <clears throat> I'm not getting choked up. It's worth seeing. It's really, really good. So check that out. Please. Next, and I only mention this because I kind of want to brag and I love it a lot. Um, I'm wearing a Barracuda Harrington jacket right now. And I just got this and it was basically half price. I got it on Amazon. Um, and I'm mentioning this because I think it's just the perfect jacket for spring especially. Spring has started to occur here in the Pacific Northwest. It was snowing like two weeks ago, and then suddenly it was like 70 degrees. I don't know what's happening. It's, it's gotten back down to like the 50s where it should be, but I went to pick up my girlfriend from the airport in Seattle the other day, and it was 81 degrees in Seattle when I went down there, which is insane. Um, but I love Barracuda jackets. I have another one in black. 
Um, look at this, this Fraser tartan lining. It's just, it's, a, it's an amazing jacket. I love it a lot. So I don't typically talk about clothes or fashion that much on this show, but if you're looking for a light, well, I could even say this is like a three season jacket because it's rainproof pretty much. Um, you, can, you can pop the collar up if you want, zip it up. Uh, there are buttons on the collar. It's just, it's an amazing jacket. I love it a lot. It has some roots in pretty much any British subculture you can think of. Most, this jacket will appear to some degree. Um, they're kind of spendy, but you can find deals if you can find one. Like this was basically half price on Amazon and it'll depend on color and sizes and everything. I'm a medium, so it's pretty easy for me. I don't have to worry about weird extreme sizes or anything like that. But if you're looking for like a lighter jacket for spring, fall, even summertime, depending on where you are, this is timeless. It's been made since the 30s. Uh, I don't know, people like Steve McQueen, uh, a lot of people have worn this jacket. Elvis, Elvis, whatever. Um, but it's been around for a long time. It's timeless, it's classic, it looks great. And uh, you should check it out. I wasn't paid by Barracuda. I wish I were paid by Barracuda. I wish Barracuda would send me more jackets and I could get every color and I could just wear one every day. Maybe wear them to bed as well. Um, but yeah, I'm just bragging. I like my jacket. It's really cool. And now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things and I will do my best to answer it on the next Sunday Smoke. I'm also accepting questions from my Patreon supporters. If you would like to support the show on Patreon, it would be much appreciated. Completely unnecessary, but very much appreciated. There is a link in the description box below to the stuff and things and stuff and things plays Patreon. First, from Patreon, we have our good friend Dane Burchett. He says, Last summer on a whim, I bought a pre-drilled block of briar and carved my first pipe. I was taken in by the styles made by Dagner pipes and wanted to learn the art myself. I have about a dozen under my belt now and was wondering if you've ever considered trying your hand at it. Keep up the good work, Dane. Dane, that is something I've looked into before. Um, you can get pre-sort of cut blocks of briar. Um, and that's something I would like to do at some point, but it would be something that would require me to have tools. And like, I mean, I have some tools, but I don't have, I don't have a shop. I don't have anywhere to do anything like that. I live in an apartment, um, but I would love to do stuff like that. I, there, are, there are quite a few um, handyman sorts of jobs, uh, arts and crafts kinds of things that I would enjoy doing furniture making. I would like to make furniture. That would be fun and I think I'd be pretty good at it, but uh, I just don't have the time or the space right now. But that's definitely something cool that I would like to do, and I think it's very cool that you've done a dozen now. That's really cool. Um, next question from Patreon is from Dr. Dre, but he, he requests a Scottish, I don't think this is the actual Dr. Dre. There's a Y on the end. Okay, so it's not actually Dr. Dre. He says Scottish accent, which always just makes me seem like a total idiot because I'm horrible at a Scottish accent. He says, <clears throat> Aye, Bradley, I see that you have come into possession of a couple new pipes. If memory serves, you have stated that you do not have a large pipe collection. Oh, God. And not intending <laughs> on a massive large one either. God damn it. Are there any other pipes that you would like to add to your collection? <laughs> it's, it's totally falling apart. Are there any other pipes that you would like to add to your collection? Be, I can't do it. Be they, be they style, brand, made by specific craftsmen, etc. <laughs> oh my god. Have a good one. Um, yeah, I don't collect pipes, Dr. Dre. I just have pipes that I smoke, and if I'm not smoking a pipe, I'll probably get rid of it. Um, any other pipes that I would like to add? I've always wanted to get a, like a really old Sheraton or maybe some of the older French pipe makers. Um, I don't have any French pipes. Maybe there's some other kind of cooler Italian brands, uh, maybe Radici, something like that. Also, I would love to have, um, what am I thinking of? Oh my God, I'm totally going blank. Famous Dunhill, uh, worked for Dunhill, left Dunhill, founded his own company in England. Oh my God. Ashton, geez, I'd like an older Ashton, like a 80s, 90s Ashton. Um, stuff like that. Another Costello would be great. More old Dunhills would be great. Um, yeah, so quite a few things. And maybe some, some of the American uh, handcrafted pipes would be cool as well. But yeah, we could definitely add some more. But I just, I like to have like a good dozen, a really strong lineup of a dozen pipes. And I'm, 
I'm pretty much there with just some really good smokers. Like almost pretty much every pipe I have in my rotation is a really good smoker. So I'd like to keep it that way. Um, next from Twitter, we have Dan Hoo-Ha2 at Dan6617044. He says, I notice that you regularly refer to GLP Stratford as your EM replacement, Elizabethan mixture. Do you think you should stop adding this qualifier each time you, re you refer to Stratford? Is this a psychological subliminal issue where you were saying that Stratford is good, but it will never be Elizabethan mixture? Do you need to have a funeral for EM and can mentally lay it to rest? Dan. Um, yeah, I think I say that because... First of all, we did a big series leading up to me picking a replacement for Elizabethan, so that's just kind of my way of calling back. Yep, we, we picked a replacement. It is this. It is Stratford. And yeah, it's, it's not as good as Elizabethan, and it never will be. It'll never fully replace Elizabethan, so it's not my favorite daily smoke. It's my favorite daily smoke that isn't Elizabethan. And it's my favorite daily smoke that could be probably something else, but it just happens to be Stratford because it, it's good enough to fill that role. All right, Adam at Sports and Pipes says, Hey Bradley, do you ever watch another pipe YouTuber before you got started with your channel? I'm sorry, he said, did you ever watch? But I said, do you ever watch? It makes him sound dumb, but he's not dumb. He said the correct thing, I said the wrong thing. He said, did you ever watch another pipe YouTuber before you got started with your channel? Also, do you mind sharing the price range of your Costello? Beautiful pipe and I know how much you enjoy it. Looking to maybe try something similar. Thanks as always. Adam, um, I've talked about this in the past. I, I think I started out when, like five, six years ago, when I really got back into pipe smoking um, as a hobby, I watched uh, Matches, uh, 860, 860, 360, Matches, remember Matches? Yeah, everyone knows Matches. I uh, watched some of his stuff. I watched a bit of, uh, I watched some of the Dagner stuff early on. Um, there were a few channels that I watched. I didn't watch a ton of anything, really. I don't watch much pipe-related content on YouTube. And I know that annoys some people because maybe they interpret that as me being, I don't know, uh, snobby or something. But it, it's just, typically the stuff I watch on YouTube is video game related. And that's kind of where my YouTube watching is directed. Um, I do watch a few other things, like I'll watch some camping stuff, and I, I don't know, just a few things that, that crop up. But uh, yeah, I don't watch a lot of pipe stuff on YouTube. So I'm, I know a lot of you do, and you could probably recommend a lot of good channels. I don't know, Dan's not necessarily looking for any recommendations or anything, but there we go. All right, this next is from Walter Sobchak Jr. at Liberty Lebowski, and he says, Bradley, I've been watching the Sunday Smoke for about three years now, and I don't recall you ever taking a vacation. Do you ever travel? What's your dream destination? If you will it, dude, it is no dream. Theodore Herzl, State of Israel. Um, okay, cool quote. I almost have never taken a vacation ever in my life, ever. Uh, I went to New York for a week about four years ago now, and that was the only vacation I have taken basically in my adult life. As, a, as something like that I took off work and I went somewhere just to go somewhere. Um, yeah, that's pathetic and sad if I think about it. I'm actually talking about now that uh, I, I'm loath to even mention the fact that, that I'm dating someone because everyone freaks out in the comments, but having, having a girlfriend means that you're probably more likely to go do things because they want to do things and then they make you want to do things. And even though I do kind of want to do things on my own, a lot of times you're just like, eh, eh, why bother? Why spend the money? Why go to the effort? But when you're sharing that experience with someone else, it makes you more likely to kind of do that. So we're talking about some places we might go um, maybe in September, trying to take a little week away or something. Um, we're actually going to do a little weekend getaway, like a three-day, four-day weekend thing three-day weekend thing on, uh, in a couple weeks, we're gonna go down the Oregon coast and maybe go to Cannon Beach and stuff like that. So maybe I'll take some video there. I actually, when I went to New York, took a bunch of video and then never edited, et, edited, edited, edit, oh my God, edited it into anything to show on the channel. So I don't know why. Uh, I went to a lot of museums, did a lot of stuff, had a good time, uh, but I never actually showed you guys on the channel, but that was so long ago. I think I had a couple hundred subscribers at the time. So um, yeah, we'll see. 
I'm sure I'll get out there a little bit more this spring, this summer, and maybe we'll do some bloggy kinds of videos when that happens. Next, we have Austin Byerly. I believe that's how you pronounce that. Austin Byerly 1, he says, Just getting to the last Sunday smoke, you should check out Kimmeron Firearms. Cimarron? Kimmeron? Cimarron? Firearms, they are Colt clones. They offer a wide variety of looks and start at the $600 to $500 range. I have an 1873P model and 45 Long Colt. Very, very high quality. Thanks for the show. I've seen those, and I've seen some reviews of those, and they do seem cool. They do seem really good quality. If I ever do get a single-action army type gun, though, I do want the Colt. Um, I just want the Colt. It's like my, my 1911, I wanted the quintessential, in my mind, 1911, so I got the Colt. Uh, basically Series 70, just very basic government model. Whoa, Siri is talking to me. Why are you talking to me, Siri? Stop it. Don't know what happened there. Uh, did I say, hey, Siri? Yeah, I think I said Siri 70, and that made Siri go crazy. Okay, anyway, um, so I do think those the these firearms are cool. I've seen some other Colt clones out there that look like they're pretty awesome as well. Um, but if I ever do get a single action, I want the Colt. All right, this is from Tyler at Tyler Brew Brew. He says, do you think the pipe smoking hobby will survive after the deeming regulations? Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna lose a lot of blends. They will disappear off the market and there will be other blends that come out in Europe and we will never get them in the US and that will be annoying because we are used to getting everything we want ever because we are Americans and we think we're entitled to that. And for the most part, yeah, why not? But yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to be missing out on a lot of cool blends, and it sucks. Thanks, government. All right, this is Andy Olcott at Ajurkotakalaka. He says, <clears throat> Hey, Bradley, I was, uh, I'm doing the, the, same, the same like Eastern Bloc accent over and over. How about this? <clears throat> hey, Bradley, I was watching a video a few weeks back, and you were trying Acadian Parikh and was anxiously awaiting a follow-up, which I never saw. Was this an old video review, or am I off my nut and you didn't post one? Uh, there's a review of Acadian Perique on the channel. I don't know if I did a first impressions and a review, but I definitely did a review. This, is, this will be good for everyone else. If you are looking for a particular blend, you can look at a playlist, go to my actual, like the desktop, or you could even do it on your phone, the, my YouTube channel, Stuff and Things, go to the videos, hit the little search button, and then just put in whatever blend you're looking for. And if you put in Acadian Perique, it should pop up with that video review. So a lot of people ask like, oh, have you ever reviewed this? Have you ever, ever reviewed this? And while I do my best to try to answer those questions, it's a lot quicker perhaps if you just go to the YouTube channel and do a little search yourself and you might find it. All right, we have at BillBallPHC, he says, <clears throat> Hey Brad, I'm still new to the hobby and wondering which packing method you would recommend for beginners. Still having too many relights for my liking, thanks. Um, we might have to delve into pipe packing again here in the future because I've been doing something lately, probably for the last year. You know, we're not going to get into this too much right now, but when you first get into a hobby, you love reading all the lore of the hobby. You like getting all the details, and that's something I think that, especially people who pipe smoking appeals to. They are people who are very detail oriented and they enjoy all that. And so you're like, oh, how do I smoke? How do I light the pipe? How do I pack the pipe? Oh, the three pinch method, the Frank method, let's do all these different methods. You know what I do lately? I take tobacco and I cram it in the pipe and I feel it and does it feel good? Take the draw, that feels good, and then I light it. That's kind of what I do lately. Um, that comes from years of me sort of figuring out what I like and what smokes well and what doesn't smoke well. And sometimes I will do the Frank method still. I almost never do the three pinch method anymore. Or if I do, it's not, it's not considered or measured. It's just me like kind of packing it in, feeling it with the tamper, packing it more in if it needs it, tamping it again. Does that feel good? Okay. Um, so as a beginner, it might behoove you to follow a specific method because until you have a lot of experience, that will probably be, be a good thing for you to find something that actually works and you can follow like a set path. At, at the point I am right now, you, you watch old videos like from the 70s, old commercials of people smoking a pipe like Condor Pipe Tobacco. They have their pipe and they take some tobacco and they shove it in. That's kind of what I do now. 
So maybe we'll have a video on pipe packing again soon. Uh, we'll see. I'm sure it'll ruffle a few feathers. Okay, this is from Eric Fair. This is the very last question on Ask Stuff and Things. He says, Bradley, outside of Elizabethan and other vapors, what is your favorite blend? Uh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. So what's your favorite song? I don't know. Who's your favorite child? I don't know. Uh, I don't do top lists usually. Um, it was kind of weird that I even had a favorite tobacco, Elizabethan, but, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, Eric. That's a good question. It's a normal question. Uh, I just, I don't know. Standard mixture maybe would have been one of my favorites. That's gone. Uh, Irish Flake I liked a lot as like an alternative morning sort of tobacco. That's gone for now. It's supposedly coming back. Who knows if it'll be the same. I don't know. And now it's the part of the show where we thank our 25 and up Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. It's really, really amazing. It's really generous. If you guys would like to support the channel, there's a link in the description box below. But remember, you watching, you being a part of the show, leaving comments, asking questions, that is more than enough. But I would like to thank $25 and up supporter Glenn, who supports the channel at $25 on Patreon. Kevin Moore is a $25 supporter. Thank you, Kevin. Derek, just Derek. We also have Cody Striegler. Cody Striegler is a Patreon $25 supporter. Nathaniel Hills. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. Kirk Crompton, attorney at law. Thank you so much for supporting us at $25. And C.W. Piperman. Thank you, C.W. for being a Piperman and for supporting the channel at $25. Uh, and then we also have the Maniac tier. Those who support the channel at $100 and up. If you do that, you get to have a Skype conversation with me. Uh, I think it was every three months or something. I'll have to look into that. I forgot. I don't know why you would want to do that, but apparently some people do. Just like Peter Straub. Thank you so much, Peter. We're actually speaking tomorrow, actually, and I'm looking forward to that very much. Uh, I hope your surgery went well, Peter. And Bob McGee. Thanks, Bob. Bob has never claimed his prize of talking to me on Skype, which maybe shows you the value of that prize. Bob just wants to be there. Bob just wants to be stolid, supportive. He's a rock, and we appreciate it, Bob. I hope you're alive, uh, and that I'm not just taking money out of a dead man's savings account every single month, but we appreciate it very much, Bob. And gang, I think that's the show. Lots of questions, love the questions. Thank you so much for sending all these questions in. Uh, keep it up. Remember, Savinelli is senza Cipriota. That's coming up this Wednesday. Remember, we're gonna have some uh, Sekiro videos coming up on the channel, so a brand new gameplay series, and then Red Dead Redemption, it's kind of winding down. The main story is going to, coming to an end this Sunday on the channel, but then there is a epilogue, which I don't know how long that's going to take, probably another 10 hours, who knows, but stay tuned for that. But until next time, tell me again, I'm going to give you this is the stuff that things out of place that I spoke. I'll see you later. This was a long one. I think we're well over 30 minutes. Thanks for sticking around.